still here. Hey. Uh, once again, my name is Jana, but I go by Plebpo online. Let's talk about community first. Let's just have you guys introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Michael Atwood. Um, I'm the organizer of Austin Bitcoin Club and founder of uh, the Yoshi app, Yoshi. Testing. There we go. Hey, I'm Brian. I am the co-founder, excuse me, of ATL BitLab down over in Atlanta. My name is G. I uh, organize all the Bitcoin events in San Antonio and founder of Alamo Labs. Very cool. Very excited to talk to you guys and get your expected perspective um, on community. And I kind of just want to give a little bit of, um, as an introduction, kind of like what I feel like community means. Um, I think this is something that um, you don't hear a lot of people like being focused on, um, but we all benefit from it like insanely. Like whenever we get together for days like today, whenever we get together for conferences, um, just seeing each other and like remembering each other's names and like knowing what each other is working on, that's community. And to me, it's like super impactful. Um, I moved to Austin to kind of like be part of that. And I just think, the value it adds to your life is um, unsurpassed by anything else. Um, so guys, can you tell us about the community that you're involved in, um, what you like about it, like kind of what's been going on lately for you there and like what makes it unique uh, location wise or Bitcoin wise? Um, yeah, so I moved out to Austin a couple years ago now. Um, I kind of started my own little Bitcoin community in Redding, California. It was just like Erica and I, uh, my girlfriend and I at first, and it grew a little bit. And then, you know, during the during the bull run, we got, you know, really bullish. So we moved down here to Austin to the Mecca, and uh, I've been, uh, you know, working at a pleb lab in the early days there, and it was incredibly... Um, so it was just, it was incredible. I mean, being, working alongside people who have kind of this same, same mission as you was a big deal. Um, especially whenever like there weren't, it was mostly just online at that point. Like up until that for me, it was like creating this community, building something. Um, so yeah, you know, Carr and uh, Kyle kind of gave me the keys to the Austin awesome Bitcoin club and just kind of been building that, uh, you know, for the past, yeah, almost two years now. The question was, what's going on and what's unique? Cool. Um, yeah, in Atlanta, we've uh, I've been in the community since probably 2020, um, helping out with uh, Stephen. Shout out to Stephen Delorme. He does a lot of work. He's the main organizer of the Atlanta Bit Devs. Um, but yeah, we have you know regular Bit Devs meetups. We started, or rather, some of our community members who are less technical wanted a less technical meetup for people who are more financially focused so they decided to do that so we've got the atlanta bit plebs which is a lot of fun we do one every other week so bit devs and then the next week's plebs and then once a month you know bit devs socratics um, and then steven and i decided to co-found atl bit lab and we did a lot of different things trying to see what worked in the community um, ultimately now every, all those meetups kind of coalesce around the lab. Um, and so we, we do all those types of meetups. And then a lot of times, uh, when hackathons go on, we'll have some sort of hackathon, uh, jam fest is what we kind of call it. Recently, Bolt Fund did Legends of Lightning 2. So we did a long, like multi-month long jam fest of building teams out and submitting projects. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I think what makes our community really unique is we're small um, and we're very diverse in that we do, we have a lot of devs, a lot of engineer focused people, but we probably have equal amounts of people who are just nerds. Like they just love Bitcoin. They want to come out. They want to learn. And like every day, and especially as we go up to the bull run, um, I see new people come out who just don't know stuff. And they're just super curious and it's super awesome to see them come out and find us and be like, how did you get here? Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's probably pretty like part and parcel across the industry, but it feels unique in Atlanta. 
So uh, cool thing about San Antonio is uh, before we started anything out there, there was no Bitcoin culture. Uh, it's very different from being out here. Anybody who lives in an, in or around Austin, Nashville, Atlanta, uh, y'all very blessed to be part of uh, such great communities. Um, for us, just a lot of potential down there. Uh, big time cybersecurity background, bunch of military bases. And the cool thing about the city is first it started with New York being like the port for everyone to enter the US. Then in the recent years, it had been Miami for a long time. Um, cool thing about San Antonio now is we're the most Southern technical city in the nation before you go to Mexico. So now they're saying we're the new home of innovation to South America, essentially. So yeah, uh, we have, you know, a lot, on, a lot on our plate, a lot on our uh, agenda to work out and uh, to bridge that gap to the world, technology, to Mexico. And um, yeah, we're just standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, we took a template that we saw here in Austin um, that built the Mecca. And that's what we're really blessed to have this right down the road. And um, hopefully here soon, we can just open up the doors for big corners from both cities just to interact and get this community more exposed to another community that uh, isn't used to that yet, so. Yeah, that's very cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, I am curious if, I just wanna hear from each of you, like what's, what's your perspective on the ideal of future Bitcoin community? Like what are, are we, are we in the ideal vision right now of community? Do you, like how do you know you're in it? Or is it um, something to work towards in the future? What is that community we want? I'm sorry for my convoluted question. You're getting deep. It came out convoluted, but I have deep, it written you know? down. <laughs> I don't think we can we can choose what the community is going to turn out to be. Like people just uh, there's all these like Bitcoin adjacent communities sprouting up. It's like the beef and Bitcoin or whatever. All the all the others. Um, they're all very interesting. I think uh, we're speaking about like the Bitcoin ideology. Um, it is very different if you're talking about kind of like well the ideology is but it's the online what people see online and what people see like in person they can be very different oftentimes in person i mean we're talking about bitcoin today but um there's not a whole like whenever you're just talking with people at a bitcoin meetup you're not necessarily just talking about bitcoin the whole time right you're talking about all these like you know adjacent things and whereas on twitter it's just like theory crafting and and you know people just kind of yelling about this and that which is also fun and entertaining and, and good and, and, you know, enlightening oftentimes, but it's also just kind of like jerking each other off. So once you get in, like in person, um, I think the vibe changes. There's a lot of people who have, you know, whenever I went to my first Bitcoin conference, I was just like blown away. I'm talking with all these real life Bitcoiners as opposed to just like tweeting uh, and, and engaging with them online. And a lot of people have similar experiences. Like this is like the best thing ever. Uh, I get to be with my people. But over time, like the more you're with those people, you talk about a lot of other things besides Bitcoin. And uh, so, you know, yeah, community, um, it's constantly evolving. And, you know, Bitcoin is something greater than all of us. And we're all just kind of contributing in our own way. And one way to do it is just to be present with people um, and, and, you know, put it into practice. Yeah, yeah just show up, what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to clarify again. So please, <laughs> I'm going off on tangents. No, no, it's it's good. I uh, I feel like there's a lot I could infer from what you asked. So okay, is there an ideal yes vision of a Bitcoin community scoped locally or globally? I want to I want to talk about locally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, no, I do not have an ideal vision for what the Atlanta Bitcoin community should look like. Um, mostly because I love it as it is. It is, it is what it is. I would change a thing most. Yeah. Because the people who come are just so unique. We all share different lives, perspectives. We're all so different. 
and we all somehow can bond over this one thing and that's beautiful right so yeah that that's how you know you're in community right when there's like people around you that look different from you yeah. but you all share commonalities totally yeah maybe we should centrally plan the whole thing <laughs> That's an idea for another day. <laughs> G, you got anything? Um, yeah, when I think about, I guess, ideology compared to being in the community, the saying comes to mind, uh, you got people that talk the talk and people that are going to walk the walk. Uh, ideology, you can be on Twitter all day, stacking corn and doing good for yourself, especially right now. Creed. <laughs> um, and walking the walk is like, you know, these community builders in all these different states all over America, the uh, the guys building the wallets, you know, Stacker News, um, everybody that's doing something to contribute to Bitcoin. And I think the really cool thing about community and all these different cities is there isn't there isn't a template that we're all going to follow because every city has its own identity like austin let's be real austin's just weird no. atlanta's atlanta atl san antonio we have a lot of culture ourselves so i think every community is going to be different in in what the city and the people decide to take it in that direction so. yeah so you kind of just have to be the the person that holds space for a, a lot of different people to come through and get involved I think you just I feel like it's like an artist you just give people the canvas and you let them kind of kind of yeah. paint this picture of what this community is uh, gonna shape up to be that's cool so. I love art um I've got maybe two more questions for you guys okay so building a community requires sustained effort over time and while you're doing that, you're going to see some peaks and you're going to go through some valleys. You're going to be there for the bear as well as the bull, very different times. Can you guys just kind of describe like some of your highs and lows that you've gone through in your community spaces? Yeah, Erica and I were talking about this on the way here. Um, like, yeah, the, the highs and lows of, uh, say, from a community perspective, like Austin Bitcoin Club. Um, it's also a reminder like staying humble is just so important. Uh, let's see, I would say the high of like the Austin Bitcoin Club was the block party. And that came like a month after the all time high. So like everybody was just still, you know, on a high, right? And businesses were eager and everything was going. People came from all over the country to like, you know, spend their Bitcoin. And it was a really cool thing. And of course, like it happened like right around the all time high. Like that's just, um, kind of what I mentioned earlier, like we're Bitcoin is so much bigger than, than all of us. And, you know, you have to just stay humble and ride the wave too. Um, we're, we're subject to, uh, the, the ebbs and flows of it. Uh, on the flip side, the low, uh, I remember, uh, many of y'all probably know Matt Snow. He's an awesome guy. Um, very bullish. And we did a meetup in February. I think it was in November, we had like the, the low of this cycle, presumably, uh, of like 15K and then we were hanging around 20K. So, you know, vibes were low, like we're all still bullish, but I mean, you know, it's not it's not the high vibes that you got like December of 2021 kind of vibes, right? Um, and we were talking about being responsibly long Bitcoin, right? Which is stupid, you gotta go all in. <laughs> But no, I mean, you know, it was a fun thing. Um, it was very, it was insightful and just kind of sombering. I right? just, you know, realistic. But Matt stood up. He's like, why are you guys so bearish? Effectively is what he said. And honestly, that hit me. It was like, we are bearish right now. Like, we're all being so, we know, like, we're all going to win. Um, and we're just talking about being responsibly long. And it, but it's like bearish. Like, what are we doing? So, like, it's going to hit you. Um, we're not immune to it. So that's something like just being consistent staying humble um th those are like paramount that's something i think about all the time don't get too hyped it's like Pareto principle type stuff it's like 
just just put in that 20 percent. it's going to yield you 80 percent of the of the value like people are going to enjoy that more than anything else if you go too over the top of everything or like you're subject to the whims of bitcoin wave so. yeah i think as a broad atlanta community the energy gets high around tapconf every year which is always a good time so check out tapconf um speaking specifically about the lab though you know, Steven and I started it a couple of years ago and we've definitely had some peaks and valleys, right? Like starting out, we were in inside of another community space, a co-working space. And we had this like a hundred square foot office space with like a couple desks. Right. Um, and then we moved into like 200 square feet. Um, and then most recently, uh, we were able to one of the lows actually is we had to say no to an opportunity to move into an even bigger space, but not realizing that that would lead us to a high of a better opportunity to allow, allow us to move into a 2000 square foot space. Um, so there's a lot of highs and lows in there as well, because trying to figure out how to move from 100 to 200 to 2000 and then be self sovereign, if you will, get out from underneath a coworking space, start our own space um has been a challenge right because we've self-funded uh we are a for-profit company it is a lab it is trying to you know pay rent and keep the lights on so it's a grassroots effort and there's months where you're like shit how am i gonna pay the rent you know <laughs> and those are low points you're like man what do we we got to bring more members in but we need more money to get be bigger so we can have more members, but we need more members to get money. It's like, man, how do we, what the hell? Um, but yeah, the high has been this year, being able to find the right combination of things and the timing, excuse me, to be able to do that scaling. Um, so definitely excited for, and it, it's kind of the perfect timing too, because of the bull run coming up. Um, and that was a big influence on our decision. So we're pumped. So. Yeah. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah, I didn't know you guys uh, were moving up, moving on to bigger things. So yeah, that's I understand. Like it's a low point, but it also like kind of puts the fire under your ass a little bit. Can't have highs without lows. You can't. You can't experience either thing. Uh, you got you. Wait. Yeah, well, definitely uh, can speak on both of those. Uh, a high was one time we got a uh, Joe Kelly of Unchained to come down and speak. It's been our biggest event yet, had about 80 people. Um, it was the first and biggest Bitcoin event in San Antonio. Um, and yeah, that was amazing just to see that many people come together. Surprisingly, there were a lot of Bitcoiners in the crowd uh, being so new to that city. So that was definitely a high. Um, also, the local news reaching out to us, uh, writing, reading articles that I've posted. I thought nobody was reading. Uh, yeah, she definitely did her research, knew, knew a lot about what I was talking about. Uh, so that was, those were two highs, um, moving into a venue instead of being at the bars. Um, that was also really cool. Now we're in the tech hub of San Antonio. So we do have a presence in the tech, in the tech sector down there. Um, and yeah, those have all been really cool. Like, I won't say I saw it coming, but you, you kind of expect it with Bitcoin because uh, it pulls in quality, not quantity. That's why you're seeing the best of the best work on Bitcoin. Uh, as far as the lows, yeah, there's been times we'd show up to the bar and there'd be like maybe four of us, a couple of us, uh, especially during the bear market. Um, but I'm, I mean, we're just being optimistic about it because we all know that we're going to win. And, you know, I would just tell the guys, hey, just remember these days, like, it's going to happen. And when it does, like, the good thing about those nights where there's not many Bitcoiners that show up to any of these meetups is when the bull market does come, you, you will know who the real ones are. And that's very important because... Obviously, we know in the space, you're going to get, you know, some scammers, you're going to get uh, tech bros, some sharks, you know, business sharks in the waters of finance, right? Everyone just wants to make their buck. So uh, 
it's really good to know who the trusted ones are in the community and uh, yeah just to be able if anybody has any questions you can point them in the right direction to a source that's not gonna try and rug them or uh, mislead them so yeah those have been our highs and our lows yeah cool um let's ask you just one more question and that is I just had it in my head. Oh, okay. I want to talk about like conversion of um, people who see what you're doing online to like actually coming and showing up to your space. Um, and do they, I'm curious if like people who do show up for the first time, do they have like a weird perspective on what Bitcoin even is? And like, do you get to kind of like find out and explore what they know um, and what they don't know, like pretty off the bat? Or um, is this like a slow, is it a slow conversion in your experience? I can go first. Um, yeah, I mean, I think about myself joining the, the physical meet space community and having found it on virtual space, meetup.com or whatever. And at the time, this was like 2020, 2021, I had been in the crypto space for some years, just dabbling around with all kinds of different shit and came with all kinds of preconceived notions about what Bitcoin was and what the rest of it was and where all these things were placed in the market and then in the potential future. And then, yeah, as time went on, I learned like, you know, from crypto to Bitcoin, right? And then from like FUD about things to like clarity and confidence yeah. and, and you know, focus, right? And so I see, we see that all the time, I would say. Just last week I was doing, we were doing, you know, chapters five and six of Mastering Bitcoin. There was a guy in there, he was probably my dad's age, probably had some grandkids and it was just funny because in the middle of this really deep technical conversation, he, he kind of like takes the opportunity where I'm like, are there any questions? And I'm like, focus on the content. And he was like, yeah. And he just goes in this long spiel about how he's got 10 grand and he wants to buy Bitcoin and doesn't know where to do it. And I was like, I was like, okay, this is more of like a dinner conversation. So, but no, we ended up getting them sorted. Right. And there's people that come in like that all the time. Yeah. And it's, I love it because it's like this beautiful opportunity to be able to take somebody's mind who's fresh and open to the possibilities and teach them and mold them and give them the information that they would need to be able to succeed and you know understand and then i see myself in that because yeah. i did that yeah. uh and so it's kind of like that that down, walk the orange path yeah. you know kind of thing so yeah um as that's the broad community in the lab you know it's it's pretty similar um a lot of our members a lot of people that come in are participants that came in as that guy and then became a dev in the community and built something and then they wanted to just hang out with other devs and you know code and stuff like that so you know it all kind of melds together and it's uh it's a lot of fun to to see it happen um for us since bitcoin's so new uh, a lot of people come in say uh they're investors in bitcoin uh so they come in with that mentality of getting more dollars. And uh, a, a recent, I don't remember where I read it or heard it, but someone, and I've been telling newbies, non-coiners about it. Uh, you don't get into Bitcoin to accumulate more dollars. Uh, you get into Bitcoin to protect your purchasing power. And I try and instill those things that uh, really touched me. Um, as far as us for our meetups, what I try and do is I try and bring in a different speaker from uh, different circles in Bitcoin. Like we've had John come from CrowdHealth. We've had a bit escrow come. We had a pleb dev Austin over here come Jana herself, uh, just people doing different things in the space so we can find something that resonates with someone because since Bitcoin touches everything, different things are going to resonate with different people. So that's what we're going after. And, I'm more after the hearts of people in the city rather than talking about the gains and all this stuff, because uh, if you can pull them in and you can gain their trust, then they'll feel more comfortable about Bitcoin rather than just being like, oh, buy the coin, it's going to go up, it's guaranteed. 
like we don't really talk about the price like that it is nice to see um so yeah we just try and keep it really just wholehearted and just honest open talk about everything i uh, always encourage you know uh, anybody to ask questions from older people to younger people as far as what is it? Um, how can I secure it? How can I buy it? How can I use it to spend? How can my business take it? Um, what we're focusing on in San Antonio is we want to be this source, of, a physical source of information for everyone to go to, just because there's so much noise out there on the internet. So we just want to be able to provide signal to the city and yeah, just gain the people's trust from that. Yeah, I think that's super important. And I think that's just like huge motivation for anyone to just like, maybe there's not a big Bitcoin community where you live, but maybe you like traveled to a conference and you just kind of like felt all this stuff that we're talking about and just like got passionate about it. And then you take it to where you live and then you just want to spread that message. That was the, that's the thing about here in Austin as a, you know, we're only an hour south. And I've met a couple people here and there from San Antonio that come to these events out here. Uh, but not a lot. Not a lot of people want to drive, go watch a two-hour talk, and then go back home, go back to work the next day. Um, so the energy from Austin, from a Miami, from a Nashville, I want to be able to bring that back to them and you know, give, just give them a taste of it. Uh, another saying I hear, or I heard recently, is... Uh, Bitcoin's, it's like I'm eating this apple and Bitcoin's this apple. And you have people telling you, oh, that apple's disgusting. Like, why are, you eat, why are you eating that apple? And that's when you look at them and say, well, you haven't even tasted the apple. So how are you going to tell me it's bad? Once you taste this apple, you'll know why I like this apple so much. So I like that too. I like your metaphors. That one's a biblical one. I like that. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. Do you guys have any uh, anything to promote here? I'll give you some space for final thoughts. You're really excited about that opportunity. <laughs> well, you know, it's always a, a good moment to promote. Um, ATO Bill Lab, check us out, atobillab.com. And if you're ever in Atlanta, come on, stop on by. Come say, come say hey. Uh, for us, it's been a long time coming. But uh, we're about to launch Almo Labs, so it's going to be something Ooh. similar to Pleb Lab. Uh, what our goal, our goal here is to open up these uh, corridors between the two cities. So uh, you ever want to get out of Austin, go to a different city, we'll have an office space for any of you builders to work. Same thing with people in San Antonio. They want access to any knowledge here in Austin. We want to be able to collaborate with Pleb Lab to uh, yeah, get some cool stuff building. So anybody watching, anybody out there, uh, we have alamolabs.space. I gotta put up a type form, but uh, we take an application. So um, yeah, look out for us. Yeah, and I've probably many of you here um, have been to the Austin Bitcoin Club before or the other meetups, but definitely check them out. If you're unaware, I think really the best place to check them all out in one place, just bitcoincommons.com. I think it has all the lists of all the different uh, meetups, and uh, we have uh, every Tuesday morning at the Meteor down on South Congress, we have a uh, like a coffee meetup that's, from what I've heard, is is growing. I, I don't go and get there every week, but uh, yeah, check it out. And shout out to Bitcoin Commons today for letting us be here. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you.